people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India is expanding its diplomatic and business ties with the Middle East, focusing on trade, energy, defense and technology. High-level visits and agreements have deepened connections with key Gulf nations like the UAE and Saudi Arabia, driven by a shared interest in energy security and investment positioning India as a key partner in the region. India-UAE relations have deepened with the strong economic, strategic and cultural ties, making the United Arab Emirates a key partner in India's Gulf strategy. The recent visit of Abu Dhabi's Crown Prince Sheikh Khalid bin Mohammed to New Delhi highlighted the alliance's significance with key agreements in energy including oil, LNG and nuclear energy. Both leaders expressed satisfaction with the progress in their comprehensive strategic partnership and discussed expanding cooperation in critical minerals, green hydrogen, AI and advanced technologies. The six, seven agreements that were signed uh, they were about the energy, about the new uh, supplies, long-term supplies of energy in the new cooperation in nuclear area, in strategic reserves. Those are very important uh, uh, developments that have taken place. Uh, in addition, uh, UAE has been investing. It is our third largest uh, trading partner all over the world. And there are thousands of Indian companies also operating from there. Large number of investments into India have come from there. They are also our partners in the I2U2, in the Gulf Cooperation Council. While uh, the Sheikh was visiting here, our External Affairs Minister was in Riyadh meeting his counterpart, the Emirati counterpart there also, along with other foreign ministers meeting. So GCC is the hub, economic hub of the Middle East. And India has a tremendous relationship with each one of them and most importantly with UAE. India's trade with the United Arab Emirates has grown by 7.1% per annum since the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement came into effect on May 1, 2022. At the UAE-India Business Forum in Mumbai, both nations signed key agreements to further boost trade and investment. Indian Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal expressed optimism about the partnership's future, highlighting its potential for substantial growth and emphasizing that strong bilateral ties pave a promising path for their economic and business relations. Together, this relationship standing on the pillars of innovation, investment and sustainable development holds an outstanding future going forward. India's relationship with the UAE and the broader Middle East has strengthened significantly through a strategic approach encompassing economic, diplomatic and cultural dimensions. This enhanced engagement was highlighted by External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jashankar's visit to Riyadh for the inaugural India Gulf Cooperation Council Joint Ministerial Meeting. This landmark event was the first meeting at the foreign minister's level between India and the GCC with participation from the foreign ministers of all GCC member states. The relationship between India and the GCC is rooted in a rich tapestry of history, culture and shared values. These bonds have grown stronger with time, evolving into a partnership that spans economics, energy, defense, technology, education, people-to-people -people ties and beyond. As the Middle East experiences geopolitical shifts and evolving alliances, India's growing influence is becoming increasingly clear. 
India's strategic alignment with regional interests signals a future of strong mutually beneficial relationships. This trend of deepening ties is driven by shared economic interests, diplomatic efforts and cultural exchanges. India's role is crucial not only in strengthening bilateral relations with individual Middle Eastern countries but also in shaping broader regional dynamics. India's tourism sector, enriched by its diverse landscapes, historic landmarks and vibrant traditions, is a major global attraction. From the majestic Himalayas to the serene backwaters of Kerala, the country draws millions of visitors annually. Government initiatives like Swadesh Darshan scheme along with improvements in health amenities and infrastructure have significantly bolstered the sector. Let's explore the growth and impact of India's booming tourism industry. India's tourism heritage is flourishing, offering a blend of spirituality, cultural diversity and adventure. From the sacred Ganga Aarti in Varanasi to the pristine beaches of Odisha and Goa, the scenic landscapes of Kashmir and exciting activities like paragliding and scuba diving, the country is becoming a top destination for travellers. The rich variety of regional delicacies and street foods add to its allure. To position India as a leading global tourist destination, industry professionals gathered at the Travel and Tourism Fair BLTM 2024 in New Delhi. The event saw participation from Indian states, travel companies and international representatives exploring tourism business opportunities. All uh, the destinations who are competing with us, they are talking about responsible and sustainable tourism. We are one step ahead and we are seeing regenerative tourism. It is all about leaving a destination better off than it was uh, before and having a positive impact on the community. The government's focus on infrastructure, new airports, expanded rail, road and waterways and developing religious circuits and hidden gems has also enhanced India's travel and tourism sector. The industry has also embraced technology, making trip planning and booking easier. With a variety of mobile applications, online platforms and travel websites, travellers benefit from greater convenience and exciting new experiences. So online booking platform has, you know, of course, given us so much of access to information, ease of booking, ease of payments. So I think online booking platforms has right, you know, enlarged the tourism economy, tourism industry. And of course, technology is always an enabler. Today, the, uh, mill the millennials and the youngsters today are uh, wanting to book everything on their smartphone using digital payments. So definitely, it's a boon to the industry. According to KPMG, tourism in India contributes 6.5% to GDP approximately 23.2 billion US dollars and supports 43 million jobs. In 2023, domestic tourist visits reached 2.51 billion while foreign tourist arrivals totaled 9.2 million in the country. As the monsoon paints the landscape in vibrant hues, the picturesque Dang district of Gujarat transforms into a paradise for nature lovers. Waterfalls come alive and lush greenery blankets the landscape. The serene hill station of Saputara with its sunset point and tranquil lake is a favourite among tourists. It offers activities like boating, trekking and camping. Dang's Vagai Botanical Garden featuring diverse flora is perfectly for leisurely strolls. The region also boasts a rich cultural heritage with its tribal communities adding to its charm. Visitors to the Giradot waterfall during the monsoon have been awestruck by its powerful cascade. Aap mere 
और मेरे परिवार के चेहरे से बता सकते हैं कि कैसा लग रहा है फिर भी मैं बताना चाहूँगा कि ज़्यादा नहीं तो सिर्फ एक बार तो यहाँ पे आना ही चाहिए और अगर आपके पास टाइम है तो दो बार आइए तीन बार आइए जब भी आपका मन करे अगर आपको प्रकृति के साथ थोड़ा समय बिताना है तो ज़रूर आइए हम सब नेचर लवर्स हैं हम हमको सबको नेचर नेचर प्लेस में जाने का बहुत बढ़िया शौक रहता है वैसे सासनगिर भी पूरा नेचुरल ही है लेकिन यहाँ की ब्यूटी उससे कहीं ज़्यादा है क्योंकि ये हिल स्टेशन है वन ऑफ दी और सेकंड रीज़न यहाँ पे है यहाँ की जो हाइट की वजह से जो इसको एलिवेशन मिलता है इस वजह से जो ठंडी हवाएं का जो फील होता है एक्सपीरियंस होता है वो एकदम बढ़िया रहता है तो यहाँ से आपको तरह के रिफ्रेशमेंट ज़्यादा मिलता है आपको No visit to Dang is complete without experiencing the craftsmanship of local artisans. Bamboo products, intricately woven by skilled hands, reflect the region's rich cultural heritage. Tourism supports local tribal communities who engage in organic farming and craft bamboo products which are abundant in Dang. वो बांबू की चीजें बहुत डिमांड करते हैं सब बांबू के वो चीज ही लेने को आते हैं सब लकड़े की वस्तु बांबू की सब है वो ही सब पसंद करते हैं वो लोग यही सब काम धंधा सब ये बांबू लाते हैं यही सब बना बना के काम धंधा वो सब घर पे बना बना के सब बेचते हैं यही रोजगार उसके चल रहे हैं इको टूरिज्म इन इंडिया इस थ्राइविंग fueled by a growing focus on environmental conservation and sustainable travel initiatives in regions like the western ghats and the himalayas promote sustainability and support local communities preserving natural beauty and enriching experiences this trend advances environmental stewardship and provides economic benefits making ecotourism a vital and expanding sector time now for asia this week the stories from across the continent the japanese government strongly condemned north korea after pyongyang fired multiple short range ballistic missiles off its east coast on september 12 Speaking at a regular news briefing, Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshimasa Hayashi said at least two ballistic missiles from North Korea flew more than 350 km to an altitude of about 100 km. The missiles appeared to have landed outside Japan's exclusive economic zone and there had been no reports of damage, said Hayashi. It is the first such launch by North Korea in more than 2 months. Thousands of supporters of Pakistan's jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan gathered for a massive rally on the outskirts of Islamabad on September 8th. Protesters and PTI party leaders rallied against the government demanding Khan's immediate release. The crowd chanted slogans in support of Khan and called for his swift release. Khan's PTI party had initially planned the protest in July. However, it was postponed when the district administration denied permission. Iraq and Iran are to activate security agreements between both countries, Iranian President Masoud Pezeshkian said during his first foreign trip to Iraq. The security pacts will contribute to regional stability, Pezeshkian added at a joint press conference with the Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammad Shia Al Sudani. Pezeshkian, a relative moderate who was elected in July, met Iraqi President Abdul Latif Rashid and Iraqi Prime Minister Al Sudani at the start of his visit. Let's now move to Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir which has significant potential for hydropower generation despite this its residents are facing severe and persistent power shortages which have critically undermined local economic activity take a look Residents of Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir are growing increasingly exasperated with the relentless power outages that are disrupting their daily routines and stifling economic progress. 
Although there was a reduction in electricity prices after a series of fatal protests in May, the situation has only worsened with power cuts becoming even more frequent. Local businessmen express their frustration noting that even when power is available, the low voltage makes it challenging to operate essential appliances like fans, severely affecting business operations. They emphasize the critical need for a significant overall of the region's outdated power infrastructure to alleviate these persistent issues and restore normalcy to both residential and commercial life. स्ट्रक्चर वही पुराना है लाइनें वही पुरानी बिछी हुई हैं तलब ज़्यादा बढ़ गई है और निज़ाम जो है वो अपग्रेड नहीं कर रहे हैं निज़ाम को इन्हें बेहतर नहीं कर रहे हैं वही इन्हें फॉल्ट है लाइनों में वही पुरानी वही इन्हें लाइनें जो बिछी हुई हैं तो अब जो है ना नए सिरे से इसको जो है ना वो मनज़म करने की ज़रूरत है स्ट्रक्चर जो है इसको इन्हें अपग्रेड किया जाए ताकि जितनी आबादी है उसके मुताबिक जो है पानी और बिजली के जो है ना वो ज़रूरत और तलब को जो है ना पूरा किया जाए Residents of Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir are increasingly condemning the Neelam Jhelum hydropower project as a major disappointment arguing that it has failed to deliver the promised benefits they are demanding a transition toward more sustainable and locally focused energy solutions that better address their needs Many believe that project shortcomings highlight the need for innovative approaches tailored to the region's unique challenges rather than relying on large-scale top-down initiatives that do not effectively resolve local issues. So Azad Kashmir mein potential maujood hai pure Azad Kashmir mein na ki sirf Muzaffarabad ki baat pure Azad Kashmir mein jagah jagah ye mini hydro station hydro project ko launch kare kam kharcha और इनको इन्हें जो है ना रिटर्न वो ज़्यादा होगा हुकूमत को जो है ना आमदन का एक जरिए भी बन जाएगा तो ना तो वो इन्हें पाकिस्तान के ग्रेट स्टेज में जाएगा वहाँ से वापस आके हमें मिलेगा The residents of POJK have long criticized their local authorities as mere puppets of Islamabad alleging that these officials are primarily focused on channeling resources to enrich the central government rather than addressing regional concerns The local populace feels that their pressing issues are consistently ignored with governance centered around benefiting Islamabad's treasury through economic exploitation. Moving on, Ganesh Chaturthi, the vibrant festival honoring the birth of Lord Ganesha, the revered elephant headed is being marked with extraordinary enthusiasm across cities and villages throughout india this year's celebrations are especially remarkable showcasing a dynamic fusion of traditional rituals and contemporary festivities that reflect the evolving nature of the festival across the length and breadth of india millions of devout hindus are flocking to temples to join in the jubilant celebrations of ganesh chaturthi known also as vinayaka chaturthi this festival venerates lord ganesha who is celebrated as the harbinger of wisdom prosperity and the new beginnings while ganesh chaturthi is observed nationwide it holds particular significance in the western and southern regions of the country in bustling cities and quaint towns alike devotees are lining up in long queues to offer their prayers and tributes to the deity traditional offering of sweets flowers and fruits are presented with heartfelt reverence temples are resplendent with vibrant decorations and the atmosphere is alive with the sounds of devotional music and chants kafi zyada भगवान की मान्यता है तो लोग काफ़ी ज़्यादा आते हैं और आज पूरा दिन भगवान को भक्तों की भीड़ रहेगी रात को डेढ़ दो बजे तक रहेगी और अभी विशेष तौर पे भगवान का सोने का श्रृंगार चल रहा है जो साल में एक बार ही होता है इन पुणे अ सिटी इन वेस्टर्न इंडिया दी सेलिब्रेशन है यूनिक एंड इंक्लूसिव डायमेंशन दी ट्रांसजेंडर ट्रू शिखंडी 
has played a prominent role in this year's festivities, performing with drums and other instruments to symbolize unity and acceptance. Their participation is a significant step towards greater inclusivity within the festival's celebrations. पहली बार ऐसा हो रहा है हम लोगों को अपने आप को स्थापित करने का मौका दिया कि हम आप लोगों के साथ में कंधे से कंधा मिला के चल सकते हैं इसलिए आगे भी हम उम्मीद रखते हैं कि आप लोग हमेशा ऐसे हम लोगों के साथ खड़े रहेंगे रिनाउन सैंड आर्टिस्ट सुदर्शन पटनायक हैज आल्सो एडेड अ क्रिएटिव डायमेंशन टू द फेस्टिविटीज विद अ स्टनिंग पीस ऑफ आर्ट डेडिकेटेड टू लॉर्ड गणेशा क्राफ्टेड ऑन द बीच यूजिंग फ्रूट्स एंड सैंड पटनायक्स आर्टवर्क serves as both a tribute to the deity and a visual prayer for global peace the ganesh chaturthi festival extends over 10 days culminating in the immersion of the idols in local water bodies symbolizing the deity's return to his celestial realm throughout the festival the sense of unity and celebration is palpable Traditional processions, elaborate decorations and community gatherings reflect the rich cultural heritage of Ganesh Chaturthi. While modern expressions of inclusivity and social change highlight the festival's adaptability and relevance in contemporary society. From the sacred rituals observed in temples to the innovative artistic expressions and community engagements, Ganesh Chaturthi continues to be a celebration that bridges historical traditions with modern values. The festival promises not only spiritual enrichment but also a deepened sense of togetherness and inclusivity across India. From heritage to modernity, Ganesh Chaturthi shines with innovation and unity. And with that, We come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.